All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of my quest to help people understand both the Rankin Technical College, AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies, and for this series of lectures, more of the AWD 1111 Database Driven Web Development, I'm going through a series of video presentations I'm creating based off some of the ebooks by Mr. Flavio Copes. I've already done a series of presentations on his HTML ebook, his CSS ebook, JavaScript ebook, ES5 to ES Next ebook, React ebook, and now I'm working on his Node.js ebook. It is 190 pages almost, and I've only done the first. I'm on page 10. All right. So let's pick it up there. Under Node.js frameworks and tools, as it says, it's a low level trap platform to make things easier and more interesting for developers. It has thousands of libraries. All right. Now, as it says, many of those established over time as popular options. Here is a totally non-comprehensive list. The ones that we will deal with in here are, are very few of these. We will talk about Express. In fact, my next series of lectures will be on Express. And as it says, Express is one of the most simple yet powerful ways to create a web server. It's minimalist and unopinionated, and that's the key to both, and we'll talk about it later. I think we're going to do almost nothing with Meteor or Koa or Next.js, which is coming on, or Micro or Socket.io. We're just going to concentrate on Express, and that'll be a little later. Now, again, Express is 12 years old. Now, it says just nine, but this was done back a few years ago. All right, so they've got some of the history that's in there. I'm not going to go through that stuff. Let's Well, let's just go through very simply. Born, you know, 2009. 2010, Express was born. All right, 2011, NPM started to hit pretty much. 2012, notice it's 2013, 2014. It's getting more and more popular. 2017, NPM focuses more on security. 2018, Node 10 ES modules provided. All right, and that, that's all we need to know. All right, now, just so you see this, <clears throat> I've already got Node.js installed, but if I were to go out here and go out to nodejs.org, this is the page. Now, you'll notice this is the whole page. Now, there is some API documentation and some other stuff that's in here. The point is, when you want to download Node, this is where you go. This it, It's typically set up so that it knows what kind of an operating system you're using. It knows that I'm on a Windows 64-bit machine. Now, the recommendation when you go through this is that you use the LTS, which stands for long-term support version and not the current. The current may have some stuff that's still in a beta type of testing phase. Now, I just want to look quickly and I want to see what version, I'm going to stop my run. This was the run I did before. So I'll say node minus V. And you'll notice it's, I've got 1417.0 and now it's 14.17.4. So let's close this. And we'll close this as well. So I'm not running any version of this. I'm going to come over to Control Panel. I'm going to go to my Programs and Features. I'm going to find Node. This is alphabetized. There it is. You can see it's 82.9 meg, so not really a big package. I've downloaded this version about two months ago, a little less, but I'm going to uninstall it now, okay? And it does not take long to uninstall either. It says I've got the runtime going. I didn't think I had it going. I'll just tell it to automatically close anything that's running. Okay. And what did this take? A minute or two? But you'll see that this, where I've got my mouse right now, will be gone in just a moment.
and it's gone. Okay, there you can see that it's gone. So now when I come back in here, I'm just going to choose 14.17.4 LTS. And there's my, there it is. And I'm just going to tell it to open it when it's done. Yours may, of course, give you the little thing where it, it, it dings for you, telling you that you need administrator permission in order to run it. Okay, I didn't get it this time, so that's fine. So, next, accept the license agreement. Next, i just going to let it go under program files. Next. Now, notice I want the node time run man, or node.js runtime. I want the package manager. I want the online documentation shortcuts. And I want the add to path. So, I, need, I want all these. <clears throat> it says the feature requires 54 meg on your hard drive. So, I'm just going to click next automatically install all the necessary tools. I've never done that. I've never used Chocolatey, so I'm just going to click Next and leave it unchecked. Click Install to do the install. Now it's asking me. So what did this whole thing to do the uninstall and the install take? You know, maybe three or four minutes at the most. And it's finished. Now, when I go back in again into Control Manager, or my control panel, I should say. And I go to my programs and features. Today is August 4th. And if I go down to Node, all right, 83 meg, 14174, August 4th. All right, so I'm going to close that. And always you can verify this by, again, coming into here, right mouse clicking, going into my Git bash, and in here just typing in Node, minus V. Before you saw it was 14.17.0, but I've since now uninstalled and installed 14.17.4. All right. Well, that's already seven minutes in. I didn't want to waste any more of your time going through that. So we just looked at how to install it. There's other ways of installing it as well. You can take a look at those if you're interested. How much JavaScript do you need to know to use Node? It says if you're just starting out with JavaScript, how much or how deeply do you need to know the language? Well, these are things that you should understand. These are all things that we have gone over in class. I'd say the ones that we cover the most in the AWD 1000 class would be about up to here. All right, and we did loops, and we did arrays, and semicolons. And we even talk script strict mode. What's not new, but what you have to understand also are arrow functions and all of the ECMAScript 6 stuff. All right. And that's what we have been going over. Things like asynchronous programming, callbacks, timers, promises, async and await, closures, and the event loop. All right. I've already done a series of presentations based on Flopes JavaScript Fundamentals book. All right. Differences between Node and the browser. All right. As it says here, both the browser and Node use JavaScript as their programming language. Building apps that run in the browser is completely different than building a Node.js app. When you write stuff through the browser, you are not using JavaScript to manipulate to create any kind of server or manipulate anything with the server. You are a front-end developer. Now, if you're a front-end developer and you already know JavaScript and now you're moving towards the back-end to become what's typically referred to as a full-stack developer, the advantage you have, as they mentioned right there, is you're using the same language. It says you have a huge opportunity because we know how hard it is to fully, deeply learn a programming language. What changes here, as they mentioned, is the ecosystem. In the browser, most of the time, what you're doing is interacting with a DOM. All right. The DOM does not exist in Node. You don't have the document object. You don't have the window object, etc. So to do similar types of things, te technically you can't, but anything that you're going to do similarly, is done in a different way. 
says in the browser you don't have all the nice APIs that Node.js provides through its modules. Things like accessing the file system, like HTTP that I just showed you. All right. Another big difference, as mentioned there, is that Node.js, you control the environment. You know which version of Node you will run the application on. Whereas when you create front-end apps for someone else, typically, you don't know what browser they're going to be using and what version of the browser you're using, etc. Since you're in control, as it says, you can not only write all the modern ES6789 in JavaScript, you can use what's available in there. All right. Now, one thing they do mention in here, and we're going to look at this a little bit later, you can use Babel. Babel basically, as it says, is it's a way to transform your JavaScript code so that it works in older browsers. Now, there's more to it than that, but I'm just going to leave it at that for right now. Another difference is mentioned there is that Node uses the common JS module system, while the browser, as it says, we're starting to see ES modules being implemented. In practice, this means that for the time being, you use require in Node and import in the browser. You already saw the require, and you're going to continue to see it as we go on. Now, I mentioned previously that V8 is the JavaScript engine that powers Chrome. There's other different engines that power other, um, opera, other browsers. For instance, there is a different one that powers Edge and a different one that powers Safari, etc. <clears throat> V8, as it says, provides the runtime environment in which JavaScript executes. The DOM and other web APIs are provided by the browser. V8, again, is the name of the JavaScript engine that powers Chrome. It provides the runtime environment, as it says. The cool thing, as mentioned right there, is that the JavaScript engine is independent by the browser in which it's hosted. All right, one of the reasons that V8 was chosen years ago. As it says, and again, I already mentioned this, other JavaScript engines have their, or other browsers have their own JavaScript engines. Firefox has SpiderMonkey, Safari has Nitro, Edge has Chakra, and there's other ones. All right. Again, what Dahl did was he basically took the V8 engine and added some C++ to it. Notice, as it says, it's continuously improved. That's why, as you notice, there was a minor uh, you know, update because I went from 14.17.0, which is what I was running two months ago, to 14.17.4. Now, those numbers are important because the 14 is typically the version number. So if you go from 14 to 15, that's a big change. All right. But 14.17, all right, then that's like basically like a new release, like going from 14.17 to 14.18. And that can have pretty big, you can have changes to it. The last number that's in there typically are for updates and the like. All right. <clears throat> As it says in this V8 introduction, we will ignore the implementation details of V8 and just talk about you know, what it is, why it is, etc. On the web, it says there is a race for performance that's been going on for years. As developers, we benefit from this competition. All right, because as browsers get faster and more optimized, the better our experience tends to be. That would just make sense. All right. JavaScript, as it says, is generally considered an interpreted language. Now, what does that mean? This is the definition that I always give of an interpreter versus a compiler. Maybe it's a good, you know, good explanation. Maybe it's not. But imagine that two people meet and want to have a conversation. And let's suppose that one person speaks only English and the other person speaks only Spanish. And they really can't converse with one another because they don't know each other's language. But they find an interpreter. All right. And with an interpreter, if you can imagine that the person who knows Spanish, let's just say, starts talking and just goes nuts and keeps going. 
with an interpreter if the person mentions a word in Spanish that the interpreter does not know how to convert into English, they say, stop, 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 stop. And they have them stop until they look it up in their Spanish to English dictionary. All right. So they've got to stop basically once it finds something that they can't understand. Whereas with a compiler, no matter what they say, they just put them, but there's something that the interpreter doesn't understand. She or he just writes it on a piece of paper and when they're all done talking then they look it up so basically with an interpreted language typically what happens is if it finds an error it stops until you fix it all right with a compiler it goes through the entire program and then it just marks the errors basically all right so javascript as it says is internally compiled by v8 using a jit or just-in-time compilation it's another thing that speeds up execution. As it says, JavaScript has evolved from a language that was generally executing a few dozen lines of code to complete apps with thousands to hundreds of thousands of lines running in the browser. All right. Apps can now run for hours inside of a browser instead of just being from a few validation rules or simple scripts. As it says there in this new world, compiling JavaScript makes perfect sense because while it might take a little while longer, once it's done, it's going to perform, perform rather much better than interpreted code. All right, so I think we're going to stop right here with this second lecture, and we'll pick it up on the command line, talking about running node scripts on the command line in just a couple minutes.